Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and today I have James Aspie joining me. Hey, hey James. Hi, what's up? Oh, lots of things. What about you? Good. Uh, heaps of stuff too, mate. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people know of James Aspie and mostly that would be due to the fact that he did a 365 day vow of silence. Can you tell us about that? Why did you decide to do that? I just thought that not speaking for you was something that had not been done as far as I was aware so I figured it would get a lot of attention mm. and therefore get attention to the cause that I'm passionate about which is veganism and animal rights. So I decided to take the vow of silence as a way to raise awareness for animals. And it did get some good um, feedback and got some really good media coverage when you did your first words I think it yeah. was. It was on a national TV station, wasn't it? Their morning program. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I was stoked. And that video, the video of that interview circulated around the world. Mm. It was seen millions of times. And my first words were a very clear vegan message, a plea to people who are against animal cruelty to live in alignment with that by becoming vegan, which is the only way you can do that. And so massive to be out on mainstream media is a pretty massive thing to do. So that's great that you could achieve that by the end of your goal. Yeah, I don't think um, that veganism has been spoke about, had been spoke about that mm. much at mm. the time on mainstream media. But I think in the last year or two, it's actually, it's been talked about like every week. So and especially from an animal perspective, which is what you're speaking Yeah, about. yeah, I mean, yeah, you get a lot of people on there talking about health mm. and raising vegan children and stuff, and it's kind mm. of more health related, but yeah, it was a, yeah, I had a, um, a animal rights message, definitely. Cool. And can you tell us about why you went vegan in the first place? Yeah, I just went vegan because, you know, at first I always believed that you needed to eat animals to survive and be healthy. I believed that for seven years as a personal trainer and all the years prior when I was alive. Yeah. And as soon as I learned that you don't need to eat animals to be healthy, mm. I was like, well, what are we doing this yeah. to them for? Why are we torturing them and killing them if we don't even need to for our health? Is there a good reason? And there's no good reason. Mm. So, you know, being a person who I don't want to hurt anyone, you know, I just want everyone to be happy and I definitely don't want to hurt innocent animals just so I can add, you know, a specific flavour to my sandwich. Like, mm. that just, it just wasn't a good enough justification at all. And so, I went vegetarian, and um, it was for health initially, then I learned that, you know, we can be so healthy being without animal products. But then I learned about the dairy industry, mm. and the egg industry, and leather, and just every everything else. All the ways that humans exploit animals for entertainment, for mm. everything. And I thought, well, why am I against cruelty to animals that are bred for meat, mm. you know, when there's at least as much cruelty in dairy and eggs and leather and all of that. Yeah. doesn't make sense. It's not consistent to just be against some types of animal cruelty or animal cruelty to some animals. Mm. Why am I contributing to any of it? Why mm. am I paying people to hurt any animals if I don't have to? Yeah. And so I just thought, oh, well, I guess that means I need to go vegan. Mm. And that was like a pretty big shock to my system because <laughs> I never, I never used to really care about animals at all. Yeah. Um, less than most people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I really didn't care much about animals. Yeah. But I didn't understand who they were at the yeah. time. Yeah, exactly. You know, I didn't understand that they were like individuals. Yeah. They had, you know, feelings and a rich emotional life and families. Like I just didn't mm. think of them. Did you? So had complex. you met any like farm animals nah. before? Yeah, I think that might be an issue because I know quite a few people that have never hung out with cows or met goats or pigs or anything yeah. that if it's like abstract like the only goats they know of what they eat or, or, or totally. pigs or cows totally. they of what they eat then of course they're not going to want to know who they are and get to know them and yeah yeah I, I didn't know any i knew my dog and but even my dog yeah. i wasn't that fussed over i wasn't yeah. a big dog lover I just didn't think there was any point. I didn't think that they had the capacity mm. to to care about their own life. I didn't yeah. think they were anywhere near where they actually are. And do you think that's a society thing? Yeah, yeah I do. How you were brought up Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I was taught. I remember when I was taught that. Yeah. And um, you know, we are we are taught that humans are better than every mm. single other species. And it's almost like 
even though humans are animals, it's almost like there's humans and then there's animals. Mm. And it's actually, no, humans are a type of animal. Yep. We can do some things that they can't. They can do some things that we yep. can't. But we're all earthlings. We all have a heart and a brain, mm. you know, and the things that matter, we all have in common. Yeah, definitely. Know? We all want to live, basically. Yeah. Yeah. We all want to live, all have families, all have feelings, all can feel pain, you know, yeah. they're all important. That's all that matters, really. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so now you're going around Australia in particular, yeah. spreading the vegan message, spreading the love. inspiring a lot of people. We've just been here, we just did a um, mock meat panel discussion with Billy Simmons and Chrissy Carvello, and um, that was a few nights ago for, for Vegan Business Network. And um, yeah, that was really fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a fun night. Yeah, I've been just traveling around. You know, I talk at schools and unis and mm. events and wherever, and I think it's been really successful because I'm just a normal guy, like I'm just a surfy Aussie guy, <laughs> you know, and people can relate to that. I'm yeah. not some extremist, like, yeah. hectic vegan dude, man. I'm just someone who thinks, hey, you, you think it's wrong to hurt animals? Mm. Me too. That's why I'm vegan. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it's been, it's been really positive to just get get it out there that it's it's not just for extremists it's not just for animal lovers it's, you don't have to be a particular religion mm. you don't have to love tofu like it's mm. none of that <laughs> you just you just want to you know respect others yeah and that's and almost i think everyone has veganism in their heart mm. you know so it's just about opening that up to people and giving them the you know a new perspective and teaching them that there's a way to live that causes far less harm where the food's at least as delicious, if not mm. far more <laughs> delicious in my opinion, and where it causes far less harm to the environment. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, and it's healthier, like it's just, mm. you know, it's just better in every way. So mm. I just want to, you know, we all just want to spread that message yeah. to help each other and make this world a better place. And I think what you said is really important that I, I personally think one of James's strong points is that he can communicate with a mainstream, in particular male audience in Australia because you are that sort of a typical Aussie bloke yeah. type thing. So that's really good and um, it's very important that you use whatever strengths or skills you have to you know, use and to promote the vegan message as best you can. Totally. And would you, can you give any suggestions to people? Like, I want to help the animals or I want to be vegan. What, what are your top tips? Yeah, I think that the best thing you can do is use social media, number one, because you know, you might make one video, you might do one post, mm. and you might only have a few hundred friends on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, but that can be seen thousands, tens of thousands, mm. hundreds of thousands of times, you know, it gets a message out there. There's no faster way than social media. You mm. make a video, you spend a week making a really good <laughs> video with impact and a, a positive vegan message in there, you know, that can be spread all around the world. So I think social media is the mm. best tool we've got and to utilize that, absolutely. That That's, you know, one of the biggest reasons why I went vegan, through learning more from other people on social media. Good. Um, yeah. Second to that, you know, you can, there's so much you can do, whatever you do, you know, if, you, if you're an artist, you could paint artworks mm. with a vegan message. If you're a writer, you could write articles, you could write a book, you could write a children's book. If you're on the radio, you could, you know, have people on and interview them about veganism. And, you know, one aspect or another. Mm. If you're an environmentalist, you can spread the message of, you know, why veganism is better for the environment. If you're a chef, you can cook vegan food. If you're an <laughs> event planner, you can plan vegan events. Like So many potentials. Whatever your skill is, whatever <laughs> your strength is. If you're a speaker, you can do speeches, mm. you know, whatever your skill is, mm. just utilize that and point it towards helping animals. Mm. They need every single voice. There's a lot of people I won't be able to reach because of who mm. I am and my style mm. that you might be able to reach and there's a lot of those people that you might not be able to reach that some other person might yeah. and it's just about it's just about as all like broadening the, our influence by using our own unique voice in our own unique way don't try to be like someone else just be the just be you we've already got that someone else we need you we need each and every person mm. who understands this to spread this message for animals because they cannot spread it themselves. So it is our responsibility as the privileged people we are who know who can see what's happening, who know how to, you know, who know the solution to it to get that message out there. 
And um, I want to go back on what you said about being yourself because we were talking a few days back about you know, doing more videos this, this year. So lots of YouTube videos that James has. And, um, you know, you had, you were doing it a certain way for a certain amount of time. You were inspired to do something different. Can you share that? Yeah, I feel like when I, when I first spoke for the first time after my vow of silence, I felt like a lot of people put me on this pedestal. You know, I'd only been vegan for a year at that point. I was still learning. I still, I'm still learning. And I felt a lot of pressure to be this amazing activist. Yep. And I tried really, really hard to, f to fit those shoes because a lot of people had so much hope in me and I didn't want to let people down. I wanted people to have someone to have hope in and get excited and get motivated, you know? And I, I tried to fill those shoes and I, I feel like I did a pretty, you know, I did the best job I could. Mm. Yeah, and, um, but to do that, I was very much trying to, you know, I wasn't fully being myself. I was a little less casual, a little bit more like strict and, you know, just aiming for a high amount of credibility, which was good, but I've got to a point now where I feel like I've built a solid amount of respect and trust amongst people who are following my stuff and now I feel comfortable just just being a bit more myself being a bit more casual just saying it a little bit in my own words rather than in you know someone who taught me using their words mm. just just using my own unique style and for me that's a lot less pressure on me I'm enjoying it yeah. a lot more I burn out less and I think the people who are following me you know they're getting the real me they're getting the yeah. real dose of me and I think they appreciate that as well. So yeah, I think it is really important to mm. not feel like you have to do it a certain way or be a certain person. There's, yeah. you know, there's people that each of us will relate to differently, mm. and yeah, just just do things the way that you feel is best. And I think also in particular for people that have only been vegan for a, sh a certain amount of time or a short amount of time, that um, you don't know everything when you first start out. You're still learning and we, you know, I hope to always be learning in our lives. And, you know, the more that you learn, the more that you research, the more you have conversations with people. And especially then if someone says, oh, well, what's wrong with honey? You can actually go, well, rah, rah, rah. And you can, the more that you have those conversations, you can work out what works well for people or or maybe that's a bit too harsh for most people and sure. you know you can work that out over time and it's not you know not everyone's going to be perfect and know how to respond to these sort of questions that come up yeah that was the first thing that, I, that, was, that kind of brings me back to what can i do to help animals yeah. i mean the number one thing you you should do to help animals is stop hurting them which means mm. go vegan Number two is to, I believe, become an educated activist. Yep. And that means learning, the first thing you can do is learn the answers yeah. to every single one of those objections people have. There's literally <laughs> There's a, a hundred. There's a hundred. <laughs> and now there's a hundred. If you type in animal rights FAQ into Google, there's mm -hmm. just a very boring looking page, but with phenomenal information. Mm -hmm. It's got a hundred questions of the most commonly asked. Where do you get your protein? Mm -hmm. Will animals take over the world if we stop eating them? Mm -hmm. It's got all that. Yep. And if you can learn them, it's like when people come to you and they start having a conversation about it, they've got a long list of objections. I had a long list of objections too. And they'll, they'll fire me. I have this mm. objection. I have yeah. that objection. And if, you're, if your job, if you make your job to answer those objections, you cross them off their list. You cross mm. them off their list of objections to the point where they have less and less and less and veganism is starting to mm. make a lot more sense and True. be a lot more yep. appealing. So make your job to cross objections off people's list. And you might not be able to get someone to go vegan in one conversation. You probably won't. Mm. You know, that rarely happens. Mm. But your job can be just to push them in the right direction, just to help raise their awareness and move them towards veganism. You can do that in every conversation. Yeah, I think it's more like planting the seeds. Totally. Like for me nowadays, you know, almost 20 years vegan, it's like non-attachment to people. Like, you know, you can give so much time and effort into educating someone or helping them along their journey or they want help. And then they don't necessarily make the steps that you think they should from the information. Yeah. Like the same information that I got, I didn't understand when I first went vegan. If I told people that information, why aren't yeah, you vegan totally. as well? Like, what, Everyone feels like that. You know, what's the deal? <laughs> yeah. And so I guess I'm like less 
attached to the outcomes and more yeah. like just sprinkling the seeds of educating people totally. and doing that which I think has worked really yeah, well. Yeah, it's better because yeah. you can do too much. You can talk yeah. too much. Like I hear other people do it all the time. Yeah. Someone gets interested in the video and says, oh, tell me a couple of things. You tell them a couple of things and you see that they've taken on mm. and you want to just tell them everything yeah. and by the end they're so bored <laughs> and like shut up. I just want to know like two things. <laughs> and, and overwhelmed and you can, well, and you can okay. push people away yeah. like that, you know, and it's not helpful. No. Uh, and it's also it's not your job you can't control what someone no. else does you can make you can do your job well yep. and that's all you can control exactly. so yeah don't expect someone to go vegan just because you've told them everything logically and now they should understand and go vegan mm. it's you're talking about years and years <laughs> of conditioning this yeah. their brains have been conditioned just like ours mm. were to think that consuming animals killing animals that we say we love is natural and normal and necessary. Like that doesn't happen in one conversation to just to just wipe that out. All those yeah. years and all that, all those years in the past of the tradition and the culture doesn't happen like that. But but this is the way. Like it's education that will get them there in the mm. end. You know, in whatever kind of education it might be, planting those seeds mm. of you know the truth rather than the myths and the lies people believe. It might be educating people through videos of the mm. graphic violence, you know, the reality of what happens to animals before they become chopped up in our meals. You know, like there's a lot of things, but it's all about educating people and showing them that there's another way to live. Mm. Yeah, and that's something we can all do. That makes what you just mentioned brings in another question I wanted to ask you. You're quite um, open about the how graphic images are helpful to the cause and I know a lot of people who would say well I'm vegan I don't need to see that mm. or it's you know too much for me or it's I'm like an emotional person I can't handle that can you tell us like why you believe that graphic images are good as oh, from you in particular yeah I think they're the I think they're one of the best things not for everyone yeah not for everyone like like I get it if you if you're a vegan and you can't watch graphic images i get that mm. mate like you know some people are very very sensitive they'll have yeah. nightmares for yeah. months after it don't watch it if mm. you if you have mental health issues mm. you know don't put yourself through yeah. it like use you know use some use some common sense yeah. but you know i watch graphic images and i get very upset and i hate it and like it you know i square watching it but i get so motivated mm. i'm never more motivated then after I've seen the graphic yeah. images, the cruelty, the violence that happens to these animals, I just get like this, mm. this shot of motivation. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm like, let's go. And then I go so hard until, yeah. you know, and then it kind of fades away and your mind just forgets about it. And I try to remind myself and I mm. watch it. Sometimes I, you yeah. know, I spend a lot of time watching it from time to time. So I might not yeah. watch it for two weeks or longer, mm. but then I might watch it for two hours. I might watch yeah. another documentary. And I think it's because it's so confronting and it's usually so hidden away and it's so hard to believe because we're told that it's humane mm. what happens to these animals. I think it's, it's just so powerful, especially people who aren't vegan and you know, yeah. that you can't deny it once you've seen it, you can't pretend that this is okay, mm. it's not. Yeah. Any rational person would see this violence and cruelty and hear their yeah. screams and see them getting their throat slit and no, this is not okay. Mm. So I think it's just such a powerful thing that mm. we should all bear witness to for yeah. them, for that motivation, especially people who aren't vegan, because mm. they need to know the truth. They need the motivation to change more than we need the mm. motive. You know, they need it at least as much as we do. Yeah. Um, as much as we need the motivation to continue being active for the animals. Yeah. And if you can't watch it, if you really can't watch it, then I suggest get motivated in whatever way motivates you yeah, best. Exactly. Um, but mm. it's not for everyone, but I definitely recommend it. Vegans don't shy away from it. Mm. If you can, if you can, if it just, just makes you uncomfortable, like if it doesn't send you into a deep depression, yeah. if um, it just, you know, it, it stirs you quite strongly, I think, yeah, I know that sucks for mm. you and it's not gonna be comfortable, but I think the benefit of putting yourself through that discomfort helps the animals in a huge way and I think I was sort of like anti watching graphic stuff like before um, around when earthlings first came out and um, you know lots of people that earthlings is the vegan maker so check it out if you haven't seen it but um, a lot of people were like yep watch earthlings watch earthlings I'm like, why do I need to 
watch that. I already know the facts. I know what happens. I'm not going to put myself through that. Yeah. But then um, Animals Australia put on a screening in Brisbane at one of the cinemas, and um, Viva La Vegan, I sponsored it. And I thought, okay, this is a good time. I'm going to watch it. And I learnt a lot of stuff. Like, it was very yeah. depressing. Everyone was crying or walking out around wow. me. It was, like, intense. Yeah, it was. Um, but I did learn something from it. And also, for me, I think, um, for me, being saying, to be able to say to people, hey, you should be watching this, but I couldn't. I feel, yeah. I feel that's a bit hypocritical. Yeah, totally. So that, you know, I've watched it now. Don't need to watch it again. You know? yeah. But, you know, I can understand how powerful it is for it's people. Extreme. Yeah. I've seen it about 20 times yeah, actually. I've seen it a lot <laughs> yeah. because I tell people about it and if they show any interest, yeah. if they show any interest, well maybe I'll watch that one yeah. day, I'm like, let's watch it right now. Oh yeah, together with them. And I, I sit know. there and I watch it with yeah. them because then I know they're going to sit there and yeah. watch it and not put it off 30 minutes in or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, so I've seen it like 20 times. But mm. yeah, and it's, it doesn't get any easier. It no. probably gets harder actually the yeah. more that I understand how much you know, what animals go through. Yeah, yeah it, it gets harder, but yeah, I mean, things are looking good. Yeah. Like, things are, well, things aren't looking good. They're a long way from good, but <laughs> things are looking better and like they're moving in the right direction. People are becoming more aware of totally. certain things at least. And veganism is booming in the mm. mainstream. Like it's just, it's taken off and yeah. it's just warming up on that, you know, on in that direction. So it's pretty exciting. Well, I would say plant-based is getting more yeah, 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 more, but I still feel like yeah. veganism is still yeah. pretty, yeah, it's a pretty exciting time yeah. for the start of something special. See how it goes forward. And yeah. um, I just wanted to mention that you were one of the um, 111 athletes in my new vegan athletes <laughs> book. And some people might not know that. So um, what, can you say why you were in my book? Because uh, you used to be... Yeah, I was a personal trainer for yeah. seven years. I was a black belt in karate. And yeah, I mean, yeah, as a personal trainer for seven years, I, I knew a lot, I thought, mm. about health, fitness, this and that. I worked on cruise ships for a long time, giving seminars and all that. Yeah. But yeah, it turns out I didn't know <laughs> as much so. as I thought. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was always telling people to eat meat, eat mm. cheese, eat eggs, protein, protein, protein. Yeah. And, you know, that was a mistake. That was, yeah, that was not the right advice to be giving people for their health, obviously for the animal's health either. Yeah. So I've yeah I've come a long way since then. I'm so glad because you know I feel so much better about recommending people eat a mm. whole foods plant based yeah. diet because they get so much more benefit, yeah. and so do the animals. It's just like the best win win. Yeah. And um, yeah, so yeah, I just and love it. Protein's still a massive one. That's like one of the questions in the book. And I think out of 111 athletes something silly like 70% of people still get asked where yeah. they get their protein from. Yeah. Like to me, it's, isn't it obvious nah, to most people that <laughs> nah. protein's in pretty much everything. And, not obvious. You know, we're sitting here not dying. I think we're okay. We've got the protein bit covered yeah, in other they, things. Nah, it's not obvious. Like that was my first question. Yeah. The first thing when yeah. I started thinking about it was like protein. Yeah. Straight away. I think that's most people because we're so bombarded to think protein is like the so important and with the only place we know that it comes in high mm. amounts is meat cheese milk and eggs mm. and um yeah so nah people don't know and they don't know it's in other foods and they think that they need so much yeah. more people usually get it over three times more yeah. protein in a day than what they need and that's actually yeah. damaging yeah. to your body that causes all kinds of different problems especially animal protein too. yeah especially animal protein yeah. so yeah, people don't get it and mm. it's funny like because some of the most elite athletes on the planet mm. consume no animal protein. Yep. So it's, I mean, that's a telling tale right there. Mm. But it's, yeah, again, it's just about education and teaching people the truth and, you know, the protein, like, for example, the supplement industry, that's, that's billions of dollars mm. there. You that's know, they make true. so much yeah. money selling protein mm. to people who don't need it and are yeah. already getting too much. <laughs> So, um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why people have this idea about protein, mm. but yeah. And that industry you're in, I guess, PT sort of industry is very, um, you know, animal-based protein dominant, isn't it? Totally, yeah, totally. Yeah, people don't talk about lentils and mm -hmm. tofu in, you know, when I was a personal trainer. <laughs> in fact, my personal training mentor, the first one I had, he said to me, there's no such thing as a healthy vegetarian. And he had mm. all these reasons why, and I was like, yeah. sweet. 
you know, I just believed him. And yeah. um, I mean, and you keep spreading those. I told everyone that. Keep, yeah, I told people, yeah. Like, people come to me. I'm a vegetarian. So I was like, well, you're gonna yeah. have to stop being a vegetarian. Yeah. You're not gonna be healthy. Yeah, but yeah, and a lot, often we just take, we just listen. Something that yeah. sounds about right, and we take it on without actually doing yeah. the research. Hell yeah. And that's one thing about you know mo a lot of I don't know about most, but mm. I know through experience with a lot of vegans is that when you go vegan, you go, okay, I need to learn how to eat. I need mm. to learn how to how to be healthy, or you know, yeah. what what am I going to miss out on? Is there anything? Where do I get this? Where do I get yeah. that? And you can learn all that on a 10 minute YouTube video, really. <laughs> but you know, m most of us spend a bit more time mm. learning that and. You know, so we, we do take the time to do the research mm. and everything you need is in a is in vegan foods, yep. is in fruits, veggies, nuts, grains, seeds mm. and beans. Yeah. So okay. yeah, you get everything you need there. Mm. And um that's great, man. We don't need to kill anyone. <laughs> exactly. So um, what are you planning this year? Oh, What's happening next? Uh next big project. Well yeah, yeah I'm I wanna I'm part of six one of six people who's doing a campaign called Think 24. It's a 24 hour tattoo marathon basically. So there's three pairs, three groups. We're all going for 24 hours. So it's not like a tag team thing. So the tattooist is gonna be tattooing, tattooing for 24 hours, each one of them. Whoa, the tattooist doing yeah, yeah, it yeah. Wow, yeah. I'm getting RSI. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, it's gonna be hard for them. It's gonna be hard for me and the other people getting tattooed. We're getting I'm, tattooed. No, I'm 24 feeling hours. for the tattoo artist rather than you. Or they don't have a needle in them buzzing around the whole time. And no, it's gonna be real hard for them too, right? So and you're gonna twenty four hours you're gonna get tattooed. Yeah, I'm gonna get tattooed that long. And Do you have much space for that? Legs. Okay, legs. Bit of room on the legs. Yeah. And um so yeah, so we're doing that. We're raising donations for three charities: an animal one, a woman's one, and a children's one. Cool. I th I'm pretty sure that's yeah. what we're doing. And yeah, our goal is just to hit the 24-hour mark to raise awareness. We've got a special guest involved, very special guest. That's going to be pretty exciting. That's my next campaign. Cool. I've got another real. Like, When's that happening? October 29th. Cool. I got see a, James's website and his social media for yeah. more info with that. Yeah, I got something so exciting after that though. Like that's the that's the big one that I'm really excited mm -hmm. about. So I just need to knock this tattoo thing out of the mm -hmm. way. Then I can work. No, no, this is going to be exciting too. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm super excited about the campaign after that. And until then, yeah, I'm just going to keep. I've got a whole bunch of talks lined up. Yep. Um, and yeah, just keep spreading the message, make some vids, mm -hmm. all that. Good. Yeah. And if you want James to speak at your school, at an event that you put on or anything like that, just get in contact with him and you know, he'll come along in his little van and come I will. visit you. Yep, I don't charge anything for my talks, they're yeah. always free. And um, so yeah, if you ever want me to come give a talk and I can talk about my past with drugs, I can talk about what I learned as a personal trainer, but mostly what I like to talk about and I always sneak it in is <laughs> my journey going from uh, apathetic meat eating person to someone who is passionate and did my vow science and you know mm. vegan for the animals and something other than just sharing his journey of silence again for the thousandth time or something be creative with what you want James yeah. to come and speak to you yeah, about. I talk about that all the time <laughs> I got heaps to talk about <laughs> yeah. well thanks so much for joining us today James my pleasure and see all of James's on um, social media and jamesaspie.com for more .com.au and see vivalavegan.net for more interviews with inspiring vegans. Thank cool. you. Thanks.